Hi everybody, how you doing? Dr. Teresa Phillips here. I have a word. I just came off of the edge from Kingdom Flame and released this word with David Cranfield. If you're not part of KingdomFlame.com, I suggest you become part of KingdomFlame.com. But I had a word this morning. I had a dream. And the dream really, really spoke to me. And here was the dream. The dream was that there was someone that I had helped. I don't know if I had saved their life. I I guess that wasn't important to know that in the dream, but I happened to be in the middle or in an auditorium. And while I was in the auditorium, there was a speaker up in the front and the speaker up in the front recognized me and called me into the front and asked me to come up on the platform and give the testimony of what had happened. And I, he was raving about me for something that I had done, but I can't tell you what it was because I don't know what it was. All I know is I got up on the platform and when I did, I looked out and I saw thousands of people, literally thousands of people. And there were spotlights and different lights. They were all on us as we were at this microphone. And he walked away and he said, give your testimony. Well, as I gave the testimony of what had happened, I what came out of my mouth was I saw and felt the hand of God. And when I said that, the place got silent. It just drew total silence. There was um, not a, you couldn't even hear a pin drop. It was just totally silent. My fallen nature might say, oh, I've offended somebody. But my spirit man waned off and I woke up from the dream. And as I woke up from the dream, I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, it's time for the church to seize the moment. And I was like, whoa, God, show me where that is in the Bible because I have to have the word. I, I'm, I'm a word person. I have to have the word. And the word that he gave me, he gave me two words, two, two scriptures. And one was Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 4 through 10, where it talks about Nehemiah was downcast. And the king says, what is wrong with you? And he seized the moment and he shared what was going to happen. He said, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? He seized the moment to tell him what the call was, what he needed to do. He seized the moment. The other scripture was Ecclesiastes chapter 9, Seven, starting with verse seven, it says, seize life, eat bread with gusto, drink wine with a robust heart. Oh yes, God takes pleasure in your pleasure. Dress festively every morning. Don't skimp on colors and scarves. Re relish life and the sp with the spouse you love each and every day of your precarious life. Each day is God's gift. Seize the moment, church. I heard the Lord say it clearly. You have to seize the moment. In the dream, unbeknownst to me, it was flowing out of my heart things of God in front of a massive audience. And the audience became quiet and they were listening. So I want to encourage you today that do not remain silent when things begin to bubble up in your heart. Now, I'm not talking about being interruptive. I'm not talking about being arrogant. I'm not talking about being authoritative. I'm not talking about being controlling. I'm talking about when you know God is present and you can seize the moment, you must. You must, because I heard the Lord say that it's time for the church to seize the moment. So I encourage you today to be your voice. Seize the moment. Walk with the King. Be a blessing and release what God has given you. And I will talk to you soon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to Global Prophetic Voice. God bless you. Bye-bye.